Welcome back. This is a statistics video that is talking about frequency distribution tables. This time we're looking at how we process grouped data. Okay, the question asks us to arrange the following data into a frequency distribution table. So we've got a whole bunch of numbers here and um, they want us to, uh, if we're going to process them in a grouped way here, it's logical to, for us to put in, uh, put in classes here that uh, indicate just the tens, so these might be test scores. We we might just overall, in, instead of focusing on individual scores here, we might want to know um, globally how many people scored in the 50s, how many people scored in the 60s, etc., right up to the 90s, just for a quick overview of uh, how students went in the test. So that might be a, a reason for doing that. Um, okay, so you notice the heading there. They're, these are classes or groups that we're putting these things in. And what we do when we get have group scores is we have uh, a, what we call a class center, which um, represents it's a single score or a particular value here that represents the group. Now, a logical way to um, place to logical place to look for a score that to represent a group is to uh, get something that's right in the middle of it and uh, so we want really the middle or the class center the center of these two uh, extremes that describe the group now the way to get that is to add those two score the two edges of the groups together 50 plus 59 if we did 50 plus 59 divided by 2 we would find the um, the center of that particular class so if we add that up, we find the mid, the middle point. It's actually kind of like uh, the center of that group each time. 54.5 we're going to quote as the class center. Now that's not all that necessary at the moment, but um, it will become necessary later on when we uh, calculate other statistical items from this uh, frequency distribution table. So don't be surprised when you're looking at group data frequency distribution tables that you have a column called class center. We won't use it all that much in this one. But for each of those groups it's going to work the same way and we're going to have class centers of 64.5, 74.5 etc. Now how did we get that? We add these two numbers together and divide by two. We basically take the average of those two numbers and we get a class center to use later on or to graph with and that sort of thing. So that often happens. But for our purposes today we're just going to put each of these uh, individual scores into their class and add up how many of these scores occur, uh, apply or uh, are owned by these different classes. So let's have a look. We'll cross off 65 and we'll put a tally mark in the class that 65 should uh, belong to. 65 is between 60 and 69, so we'll put a tally mark on that one. We'll just ignore the class centers for now. We're really focusing on these classes here and whether the individual scores um, belong to each of those classes. So we'll cross off um, 73 and put a marking down in the 70s. 64 is another tally mark for the 60s. 85 is in the 80s obviously. We just keep crossing each individual score off and putting a tally mark down in the uh, class that it belongs to. 77, 82, 93, 86, 63 goes in the 60s, 58 goes in the 50s. Now this next marking, we've already got four tally marks in the 60s and we're just about to add another one to it and just uh, want you to be aware of how we do that. We cross off the 63 and we'll put a, a diagonal mark there. We do that so it makes it easier to add up the tally marks later on rather than having just a whole bunch of uh, vertical uh, tally marks. Every, every fifth one we do a diagonal. 62 gives us another tally in the 60s. Uh, 79, another one in the 70s. Uh, 61 goes there. 74 goes there. Okay, so we've tallied up how many scores occur or belong to each of those classes appropriately. Now we'll just fill in the frequency uh, table from that. So there's one tally mark for the 50s, so there's uh, the 50s uh, occur once. There are seven scores in the 60 to 69 category, so that's got a frequency, that class has a frequency of seven. There are four markings there, pretty obvious to, way to fill in that frequency bit. So we think we're done. We'll just do a double check to make sure we haven't missed any scores. I mean, crossing off the scores as we did at the top helps us a lot so we don't miss any. Just do things carefully one at a time, but there's a double check we can use. We'll add up the number of scores that we have, and apparently there's 16 of them, I'm here to tell you. And uh, we can double check that we haven't missed any by adding up our frequency column 
and making sure we've processed 16 scores onto our table here. So 7 plus 1 plus 7 is 8, plus 4 is 12, plus 3 is 15, plus 1 is 16. So if that uh, count of the original scores uh, tallies up nicely and uh, agrees with the total of the frequency column, we should be uh, confident that we've done everything pretty correctly there. So that's how we tally up the and construct a frequency distribution table, and uh, this time with grouped data. We did find the class center each time, but we'll worry about that in, in uh, future videos. So um, there we have it, frequency distribution tables using grouped data. All right, see you next time, peterblakemath.com.